we have a guinea pig. Her name is Charlie. And she, for some reason, like she's a year and a half ish, something around there. For some reason, she has stopped eating to some extent and she stopped pooping and we have no idea why. So I put out a video because I was asking people because it had been like four days and it, it was starting to get to the point where it's kind of rough. Right. If we don't know what to do. A lot of people said that it could be something to do with her teeth like they continue to grow so maybe her teeth got too long and it's she needs them filed down or something so i have a friend that is a vet and she ended up coming over not long ago and she did like a quick little check just seeing what's going on it is not her teeth it is something internal uh something inside is just making it so she she is having trouble pooping and that in turn makes it so she doesn't want to eat. She's she's very, very lethargic. Uh, somebody somebody on the video mentioned like wet tail disease or something like that. And I have no idea what that is, but I want to look that up. If have, you, have you changed the food around recently by any chance? Did you not her regular food because she's pretty picky on her regular food. So that has been the same. We've been giving her extra hay. Uh, she likes her carrots and lettuce, so we've been trying to give her that here and there. And we have been upping the fruit just a little bit, like cantaloupe and strawberries and stuff, because she's that'll help with the fiber and help strengthen the, the poo. So we have tried a couple of different things. Um, it, it's just sad. We've had a couple random times where like I'll pick her up because I've been working with her every single day trying to help poop come out. So I'll pick her up and I'll kind of work her around and have her running around and stuff like that just to work some of that. And this morning she had a lot and she drank some water for the first time in a few days and she ate just a little bit. I just, I want her to either get better and everything be okay or she just pass. Because at this point, I'm so worried that she's like suffering. I can't, right. it's, it bugs me because she, she doesn't deserve that. So yeah, I'm really, really working with her. A lot of people mentioned take her to the vet. Yes, we would love to take her to the vet. We have had, I don't know. Uh, close to six, seven, eight thousand dollars worth of extra expenses lately. And I mean, we aren't hurting on money, but we aren't rich by any means and we can't really afford it. Uh, it, it would either be choosing between the oldest boy's wisdom teeth getting taken out or her. So that's kind of where we're sitting at. We, we kind of have to make a choice. That's but, gotta be super hard though. Yeah, it sucks. And, and I don't think it's settled in with uh, Carson yet. Like what is actually because she hasn't experienced death yet, really. So she doesn't quite understand like her. Uh, my grandma passed a couple years back and she she remembers her, but not that well. Like they weren't super, super close. So that was the only real death that she has seen. So, yeah. So, yeah, this one's definitely going to be something difficult, especially it's part of your family, you know, like part of your yeah. little family, your little circle. Have have you had to deal with that a lot with pets, like have the kids cared? And... I don't honestly I don't have pets. I well, right. I've had a fish before and yeah, they got upset about that. But mm -hmm. that's another reason why I don't do pets like I just I don't know. I'm it's hard to get attached to things. And then I don't know. I just struggle with stuff like that. Well, and it's something else to deal with, something else to pay for. Another person to take care of, right. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, that's part of the problem is we have to be able to afford something like that. So it's it, that's a lot of money. We had pet insurance, too, uh, for Daphne and Charlie, and we actually got rid of it because they weren't covering anything. Like, legit, they were just taking our money. Was that insurance like through Petco or like one of those local places like that? It was. I can't remember exactly who it was because Shan set it up, um, but it was. It, it was through some random insurance company and they like raised the rates recently. It's already kind of expensive and they have not covered a single thing since we have got them. I have so many friends that have run into problems with 
bringing their animals to the vet and having all these unknown expenses that, mm -hmm. and, and even having insurance and the insurance doesn't cover whatever the cost of these procedures and medications a lot of the times. Was it you and me that, I, I can't remember who it was, but we were talking about uh, at medical, like at, at hospitals, they're gonna start itemizing what's actually going on, like what you're paying for. Were you and I talking about that? No. So apparently, and I don't know a lot about it, so if I have any wrong information, just say so. But apparently whenever you go into a hospital and you wanna get like, like let's say you have to get a CAT scan, you can figure out how much it's gonna be beforehand. Everything is, is individually itemized out so you actually know what you're paying for. And then, uh, like you can shop around you can go to other hospitals and compare prices and and make it if that bill passes because i think it's a bill that still has to pass if that passes that will change the medical game big time like i even know women that have babies that, mm -hmm. that you know you know you're pregnant you know it's going to be you know yep the amount of money that they have to turn around and pay in the end oh my god i'm so yep. thankful that my medicaid or whatever i had when i was pregnant always took care of those things just think about that though if, right. if it came to shopping around like you're about to have a baby so you go to three four different hospitals to see okay what what is expensive what what are they going to do for me yada yada and you figure out oh this hospital is four thousand dollars cheaper than this one we're going to go to that hospital and it could actually help medical prices go down because they'll have to start being competitive i wonder if some of the inner city hospitals would be more expensive or le like probably more expensive and then like the little rural areas would probably be the cheaper way to go sometimes but they also the rural ones don't have as much funding so they do have to make things a little bit more expensive it, it depends it it depends on what it is but like you know dental things people yeah. that would be amazing for I'm dental thinking. care because i have to say so many people run into unexpected dental costs you know you go to the dentist you don't expect to drop three grand because you need a root canal that's exactly what's going on with talon because talon's wisdom teeth grew in okay at first but it's so hard to clean back there they're causing problems right so he which decays his, the other teeth right so he has to get his wisdom teeth out and like the bill is astronomical. It's it's like eighteen hundred. I think it was eighteen hundred. And then if we uh, do anesthesia, it's like four thousand something. We told him like you're gonna have to do laughing gas. We can't do anesthesia. They also do no. something <laughs> called twilight sedation, which is halfway in between like being knocked out and you're still awake, kind of. Yeah. I would go that route. Honestly, they even do implant exchanges and stuff like that for breast augmentations. Mm -hmm. You can, you don't even have to be put out. You could do it right there with the twilight sedation that they give. I think that's kind of what Talon would be getting. It would be the old school laughing gas. So like, right. it just helps with the pain. You're kind of out of it. That's all he would be getting. But, but it helps because when I was, mm -hmm. when, when I was younger, I had the worst dental trauma from not ever being offered laughing gas or the things to make it easier. That is why I let my teeth get to the point that they got to and started crumbling and breaking out of my mouth because mine trauma. Yeah, I, <laughs> I am. I'm not afraid of a lot of things like hospital. You can take me in the hospital. You can cut open whatever you have to on my body, but you start fucking with my teeth. Oh my gosh. And I'm the sorry. noise, the noises at the dentist bother me because you're always hearing it and it's like, ugh, right, ugh. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm literally terrified. My teeth are jacked now from the subs. So it's like, I, I mean, I think they've recovered at least somewhat, but have they? Because right. they've still, I've still had some that have kind of broken. Uh, once they get weakened in some degree, like they kind of keep on staying weak. So it's what's going to continue to happen. Cause whenever I go in, I'm probably going to have to have like all the debris and extra shit removed. 
I need my middle tooth fixed. Like I'm probably going to have to get brand new fucking teeth. And it's like a domino effect. It's like the cost of teeth, even the cost yeah. of dentures is like yeah. 12, 15 grand right now. Yeah. And what you have a payment plan. Okay. That's great. So I'm going to be paying this for the next freaking five years. That sucks. <laughs> like, I, right. I don't know. I want it done. I re I want new teeth. I want all new teeth. That is the one thing out of everything that's ever happened to me that I actually want. Uh, it just, it's so damn expensive and everything. I else think that everyone deserves to have their teeth done. I also mm -hmm. think that a lot of these insurance companies should start incentivizing incentivizing i might be saying this wrong recovery like if you can show that you can remain in recovery and do the things necessary to better and recover your life those things should be offered without question because they're part of someone's self-esteem and confidence they don't care about shit like that though but they should because that goes <laughs> yeah. into mental health for yeah. me it's a mental health thing the teeth is tied to mental health issues well, in your, your mouth and teeth and everything, your teeth and your gut are tied to a lot of things going on with your body. Also, so. yeah. And it's like, it's like with your teeth, if your teeth are breaking down, like for me, my teeth went not only because of the destroyed my teeth, the amount of acidity in my body, mm -hmm. I have really bad acid reflux. So the acidity was just pouring out into my mouth and just eating the enamel off of my teeth. Shan had that whole surgery or whatever to fix her acid reflux because she was having it so bad. Right. So since that has happened and not to get into her uh, personal business, business too much, but ever since that happened, she her body makes really weird noises. It's kind of funny. Like it, it cracks me up. We laugh about it all the time. Hey, but, at least you can laugh about it, though, right? Well, it, so so that part wouldn't be that big of a deal. If that's all that had happened, whatever. But it's gotten to the point where, like, she she has to be careful every single time she eats because it's caused like a lot of uh, going to the bathroom, like number two issues. And it's it's she's miserable because every freaking time she eats, no matter what it is, she just has to go to the bathroom. And it's like, OK, I guess this is better than the acid reflux. But is it really? You know, I know so I have so many friends that have had either gastric bypasses or surgery for weight loss or the little rubber band where they, you know, minimize your stomach. Mm -hmm. those procedures or like you said the procedure where they you know help you with your acid reflux and stuff like that they mm -hmm. always have secondary issues after the surgeries i know so many people that got the surgeries for one thing and needed to have multiple surgeries for other things down the down the road like you said even her uh carpal tunnel because she had like the tendon or whatever right uh, so she got that because her hands every time she would wake up her hands would like horrible um, pain i i yeah well and they would like tingle and they'd almost be asleep sometimes but they'd hurt right. so so she got one of them done she got her left hand done and it hasn't healed like she still doesn't have the the strength back and it's been months at this point it took forever to even recover to this point and she was like i'm not doing my other hand because like it, it's miserable i don't blame her i was supposed to have that done i have bilateral car carpal tunnel in both arms and then yep. ulnar nerve damage i don't even bother to do those things because i was supposed to have the surgery and then i get nervous also I have a torn rotator cuff that I've been just living with for like the past five years because I'm so scared to get the surgery for this because I'm afraid that it's going to hurt me worse and then it's going to trigger me to go backwards. Like I, I know a lot because you're constantly using and moving certain joints in your body and I just surgery on them makes me leery. Well, and how are you going to do that in the first place right. with the kids and stuff? Like, what, right. you're going to be out for days? Where and that's why I put off so many different things. Like, I know yeah. it doesn't make sense sometimes to not have these things fixed. But also, <laughs> I got myself right. I got myself to the point where, like, when I would lift this arm, my shoulder would just pop out of the socket. My knee was doing it for a while, too. Like, my joints are really loose in my body for some reason, but I'm always scared of surgery because mm -hmm. sometimes you make things more complicated with surgery. 
Yeah. I, sh I know that firsthand, unfortunately, yeah. from my you know, experiences. A thousand percent. Yeah, you just got done dealing with it in one way. I mean, right, right. So it's like, you know, and a lot of people can go down these rabbit holes where, you know, as we age, these, you know, you're going to be in pain. Certain amounts mm -hmm. of pain, I just think I'm just always going to deal with. You know, yeah. like what becomes as, yeah, and as parents, we always put ourselves on the back burner, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like uh, we were talking about clothes the other day. I haven't got clothes for myself. Like Shan bought me this shirt, and I think this is the only new clothing I've had for like a year at least. It's just I don't get myself things because the kids get everything. And, right. Yeah. I think a lot of fathers are the same way. Yeah. For, for years, I didn't ever buy myself things, put it back into myself, but I prioritize it today. I do. Sometimes I feel like I have to be selfish sometimes. It's not really being selfish looking out for yourself, but no. I mean, I get it. But, my, but I always make sure that my kids have what they need before I before you spend get money paid. on myself right yeah. right yeah and and shan shan gets stuff for herself a decent amount like she doesn't worry about it as much but that's the thing too i i don't get things for me not only for the kids but for her i make sure she can get whatever she wants and the kids can get what they want and and i just deal with it it's just i don't really need a lot like what, right. what do I actually need like every once in a while I may want to get a, a new game or something just for something to do whenever I'm chilling or your Pokemon cards I know or, you like them or some Pokemon cards and that's I mean that's not super super expensive and that I mean that's an investment yeah. so for those of you that don't know Kyle does like his Pokemon cards I'm calling you out here right uh -huh, uh -huh. Because Actually. every time that Kyle and I, before we go live, we always FaceTime and he's always, I think it calms your anxiety down though, I've noticed. Yeah. You yeah. playing with the Pokemon cards and like reorganizing them is what grounds you before we, you and I go live a lot of the time. But for some reason, me playing with my hair or like curling my hair is therapeutic mm -hmm. to me. It calms me down and grounds me. I, I feel like that's common for women. Right? right like a lot a lot of girls play with their hair when they're nervous uh or when they're trying to be all like flirty or something they'll do that that's a different hair you know what i mean you do different things with your hair when you're doing that like the twirl right like the twirl nerves. that's usually nerves and uh, that's why i love twirling my hair on the curling barrel before i t go live because it does it calms me yeah. down but it's funny how you and i both have our go-to thing that we notice you know uh, you got to have something no matter what you have to have something even even if it's something small like collecting some cards or something it, it's like if you don't have something to look forward to or like mess with here or there and, and kind of take your mind off everyday life you're gonna lose it that's like me with my walks that's why i really used to enjoy going on my daily morning walks because it gave me something free to focus mm -hmm. on me my own yeah. inner peace. Like I would go on my walk, I would be doing my body and mind justice and like planning out the week, like calling the teacher if I needed to, sending the messages or, you know, doing whatever I needed to do, but still prioritizing me at the same time. And that's still, it, all it is is a walk. Right. Like it's, it's nothing crazy. You don't have to come up with some elaborate thing like, oh, I got to go skiing every other weekend because that's right. what it could be free. Does. It could be something so easy and free. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I was reading through the, the comments a little bit and Amanda said that uh, she almost died from her she surgery. Had a hematoma? Like, yeah. yeah. It's very scary. Hematomas are a risk of surgery. So a hematoma yeah. is when you, you, it's like a bruise that has like bleeding. And that is very common after surgery. It's it. Did you have to have that drained? Well, especially neck surgery too. Like that's intense. Right. Any surgery on your neck is is crazy, crazy scary. So, I can't imagine. Gosh, yeah, I, I can't. Oh, the doctor knocked an artery, nicked. I'm guessing that is. Uh, oh, that's rough. Because you could have you could have gone on the table right there. So for people who are audio only, uh, Amanda had surgery on her neck and then 13 days later got a hematoma, hematoma and then 
the doctor while he was doing the surgery, she whatever, uh, nicked an artery and it made it so she couldn't swallow for a little bit there. That is the type of shit that, again, I'm good with any part of my body, you, body, you got to operate, you got to do whatever, cool, but my teeth, my head, my face, like, oh my gosh, it scares the crap out of me. You know what's crazy? I came across this random <laughs> TikTok of somebody saying, they had an ingrown hair and this person was on life support from an ingrown hair because the infection that their body uh, took on from yeah. an in, just an ingrown hair that they were plucking and playing around with caused this person to almost lose their life. And it's crazy. You think about people getting medical procedures all the time and then somebody mm -hmm. potentially getting so sick from something so like minuscule. <laughs> It's crazy how much the human body can actually take to, cause like, and this is, this is blast from the past, but uh, back whenever I was in like high school or whatever, I used to always watch the, um, oh man, what was it? It was those sites where you could watch people with basically with like a GoPro and they were in battle, like in the war and it was all live feeds and stuff like that and videos of people like being mutilated and all types of stuff but you can see the crazy amounts of things that your body can actually take and then an ingrown hair can wipe other people out like it, that's that's insane right and i was reading the comments of this video because i'm like it does. It makes sense. Like I used to get MRSA a lot because I used to pick it myself and mm -hmm. I carried MRSA and a lot of us do carry MRSA in our body. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get that the right medication to cover MRSA, that infection will go septic. You will go septic. You can die. Yeah. Yeah. Sepsis is no joke. One of my exes, uh, we're still good friends and we see each other every once in a while. I actually used to treat her house uh for pest control but her dad who is one of the coolest people ever uh he has blood cancer right now and that's that's another one where it's just like it, obviously any cancer is bad but it's anytime it is blood related and it's something like sepsis or cancer that it's, right. it's spreading throughout your entire system getting rid of that is is hard because it's a, it's an overall systemic infection that can't be isolated pretty much right you, you can't you, you can't just take it out you can't right. take out all your blood or, or whatever and who knows what else it's affecting so yeah we were just talking about the other day i was i was telling her to keep her head up you know that's light work for him but it's it's hard dealing with that kind of thing with your family and everything it's it's something that happens to everybody everybody freaking gets cancer nowadays so it's, it's scary uh all right what we got next we didn't even get into any of our topics yet um so we were going to talk about the debate a little bit i didn't actually watch the debate i got uh i, I checked out a couple of things amanda i'll talk about that in a little bit i got you but one of the main things that i was noticing from the clips like and i watched kind of all throughout kamala didn't really say anything like every time something uh a policy or whatever was brought up she would give a kind of roundabout answer to almost everything now i am not for kamala i'm not for trump i'm not for either of them they both have good uh good policies and they both have good things that they can do but it just everybody said trump lost the debate and I really think that he only lost it because he was the only one actually talking about things going on. She was just talking nonsense half the time. You know, this is one of the first elections that I think a lot of people can really wholeheartedly say they don't want either candidate. Sure. I've seen so many people saying the same thing. I think I, like I told you earlier, Vance, he's the only reason why I wanted to go Trump's way. Cause uh, I think the vice president only has so much control anyways, while they're in office and doing things. But I think Vance would be a good level headed person to kind of keep things in line a little bit from the, from the backseat. So otherwise I don't, I don't care. It just, neither of them are good not uh neither of them are actually doing things that'll benefit this country in my opinion now i do think that we need to get 
like immigration under control and all the illegal aliens under control. Speaking of immigration, what is going on in Chicago? Uh, so basically immigrants are just getting sent to Chicago and they're getting all types of housing. They're getting all types of money. They're getting literally everything they could ever want, need everything while people are in the streets. American citizens are in the streets and they're suffering and they have nothing. I saw, I, when we were reading this earlier, Mm-hmm. Um, $15,000 a month in food stamps some of these people are receiving. That is crazy because that right there is crazy. It's hard to not qualify for stuff like food stamps and be yeah. the average American citizen because it's like you're still right there at poverty level. That's where I am. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and I would say I'm middle class, but even me, if you really look at what's going on right now, especially like take Chicago, for instance, the crime and just shootings and everything going on out there, it's crazy. There are things happening every day and it's it's horrible. And right. it's a lot of lower income communities. Part of that is because there's there's no money. There's no like they can't survive unless they do all this gang banging and stuff like that. Now, that's not an excuse, but it's a reality. And it's kind of getting to the point where if you're poor, if you're poor enough, you will get so many damn benefits that you're actually doing as well as freaking rich people getting $15,000 in food stamps. Are you freaking kidding me? You can go buy your groceries and then get three, 4,000 in cash for the month if you need and to. And when we, when we looked up the price of it at the end of the year, that was $240,000. That's crazy amount of money to be receiving for free. For food. Right, <laughs> just for food. Food and food alone. Yeah, because right. they're also getting money on top of that for, for other housing. Food. Right, housing, Section 8. Whenever you go into these houses, there are, I don't know, eight, nine, ten people and not a single person is working not a single person has a job or they may have a a few odd and end jobs over here which if that's the case that's fine but then you got people who are from america who are busting their ass every single day i i have a job that i usually work 70 ish hours a week on top of running a business on top of doing this i mean i'm fucking tired homie Right. And I'm busting my ass, and we have to make decisions like, can we get Talon's wisdom teeth out and save the the pet? Because at this point, we have to let the pet pass because of that. That is yeah. sad, but that is the reality of the world that we're living in today. It's like mm-hmm. years ago, I used to get way more help and assistance with certain things. And then once my income became a certain level, I don't get that help anymore. But yeah. I'm really living right there at poverty level because I don't get that help. I'm spending hundreds of dollars every day at the grocery store, you know, just for bare necessities. Yep. It's, it's yeah. scary. It's it's getting to the point the the poor are not contributing and they are basically getting crazy, crazy amounts and getting everything they could ever need. And and especially immigrants, which I'm not against immigrants in any way. I understand you're trying to escape uh, a life right, of poverty. Well, they're, they're trying to escape hell over in their countries where people are, are getting unalived every day and, and things are really bad and come somewhere where it's stable. And should those people get assistance? Absolutely. But if we aren't helping our own people, why are we helping them? It, it's right. There's got to be a give and, give and take. There's got to be a balance. With wow. this, I sent you a video and there was there's like, so I'm trying to explain to Janet some of the backstory because she's saying, well, how are these people getting benefits because they're living like 15 20 people in one household Mm -hmm. and they have multiple children and and they're piling into like a two-bedroom apartment and splitting the cost of that apartment which you're getting housing for anyway yep yeah so it's like they can get ahead quicker than someone like us 
Unfortunately, it's sad. The rich are getting richer. If you are middle class, if you are out there working your ass off every day, you're just you're screwed. There right. won't there won't be a middle class much longer unless things change. Because, yeah, I, like I don't. And it's I, hard because it's even hard, like when you're trying to raise children in today's mm -hmm. society to teach them the value of a dollar. It's not what it used to be. <laughs> a hundred, uh, listen, a hundred bucks before you could walk into the grocery store, you could buy a few meals, you know, have some good snacks up in your cupboards. Not today. You walk yeah. into the grocery store with one hundred and fifty dollars and that's one day's worth of food and it's gone the next day in my yeah. house, at least. Yeah, because my kids are used to being able to take with whatever they want. And then now I'm like, you know, we got to limit the amount of snacks. And I don't, you know, I try to make them limit certain things now because of that. Well, and, and Aaron's right. They're trying to eliminate the working class, which is crazy because with the working class eliminated and it, it all just being you're broke or you're rich. The, this country is going to come to a fucking standstill. Like no one's going to be able to get anything done and it's going to get really freaking ugly. So right. I don't know. That's that's not a uh, that's not a place that I want to <laughs> I want to be in or have the kids grow up in. The next thing that I would like to discuss is I don't know if you guys follow Matt and Abby, but yep. they are huge. They have a huge social media presence. And I came across a video on my FYP talking about how they had left their child or their children ages three, two children, one was three and one was under, you know, that age in a, a cruise ship while they went out to dinner and watched with the baby monitor. You know, you wait, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been on a cruise. Have you been on a cruise, Kyle? Yeah. Yep. Cruise ships are huge, right? Yep. You can't get from one side of a cruise ship to another side of a cruise ship in the matter of seconds if or minutes if there was an issue going on in that room. Yeah, it's it's going to take a good 10, 15 minutes most of right. the time. Right. Right. So apparently they I think it was a Disney cruise. I could be wrong, but you know they offer like childcare yeah, Disney Cruise has a daycare. Right. So they had so I think they were on day like five and they said, you know what? We decided to not bring the kids to the daycare because it wasn't fun for us anymore because the kids weren't having fun. So instead, because I guess the kids were being whiny, they switched their dinner time to a later time and decided to leave the kids unattended in the room. Now, the issue with that is small children in a room on a cruise ship where that door can be open and a child could slip over the side or climb onto something and go over the edge very very not safe at all so these are little kids right like it's we were having this discussion where would that kind of somewhat be okay it obviously it depends on the kid everybody is different levels but once a kid's like 9 10 11 maybe in that maybe both of them are, are 9, 10, 11, or like one is maybe the younger ones, maybe like seven or something too. So that age, okay, I, I could kind of see it. You're going to have dinner real quick. You have a constant FaceTime call going there in the bedroom it, and you have safety precautions in place to make sure they aren't gonna go out the balcony, nothing like right. that is gonna happen. Okay, I, I can kind of work with that but a three-year-old and then the right. other one is even younger, that three-year-old cannot take care of the little one. What if something, what if something happens? I mean, what if that little one goes and swallows something? You got to get all the way to the other side of the ship while you just left a three-year-old to freaking handle a, a child choking or something. Now, also a lot of people, cause I'm reading the comments as well, mm -hmm. like, you know, all right, well, why don't you just hire a babysitter? Well, these cruise ships do have, nanny services like to drop the kids off but a mm. lot of parents have trust issues and like of that is leaving the child unattended if something happens that is on you as a parent and i'm sorry that is on you alone yeah it's 
I can't think of any way that it would be okay. You know what I mean? Especially right. at that age. Because so if the three year old and the whatever are are bored at the Disney cruise daycare, so were you leaving them in there like twenty four seven the rest of the time so you could do your own thing? Right. It, it, and the problem is these people are also influencers. So they could be thinking like, uh, our kids are too popular. Someone may try and get them. So we don't feel comfortable leaving the kids in with that group because people know who we are. That's a position that you put yourself in first off. There's well, the whole there's thing, like, like the monitor, a lot of people were saying in the comment section, what happened to those days when parents didn't have a choice and they would put two chairs next to each other in a restaurant mm -hmm. and make the kid lay down if the kid's tired? Like, yeah. as parents, you have to do what's always in the best interest of the safety of that child. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that was what was overlooked in this whole situation. 100%, because those kids it comes into effect and it comes the situation comes into question if anyone thinks that those kids were not safe in right. my opinion i don't think they were safe i agree all. like not even a little bit to go against kind of what you were saying i'm just giving you another side i just thought about sure. if they they're big influencers they got a big social media presence people mm -hmm. could have been paying attention like oh look who's on the cruise look who's on the cruise but where are their kids Yep. Where I'm paying attention to what room they stayed in. How do you know somebody wouldn't be slick to come and try to breach entry into that room while they see you sitting there by yourself? They shouldn't be able to get into the room. I'll give mm -hmm. them that. But all it would take, especially with a three year old or a two year old, if those kids can reach the handle, you knock. Oh, hey, your mom sent me. Right. And she, she wanted me to give you this. And they'll open the door in a heartbeat. Besides the baby monitor, people are saying, well, you know, I use FaceTime all the time to babysit my kids. I've heard other parents in the comments saying that. How reliable is FaceTime as a babysitter? Yes. Like, when did we, when did FaceTime become like the way to take care of your kids? I get, I get that you can see them. In it's a pinch, like what you were saying, if it was age appropriate in a pinch, like you have, <laughs> you know, you have to run real quick to the store, but you even in that situation what if something happens to me on my way to the store and i don't make it back for those kids what if i leave my house thinking i'm running two seconds down the road to get a red bull mm -hmm. and i'm leaving my kid on facetime but i get killed in a car accident what happens to the kids yeah and it's it's one of those things like at i'm like two blocks away from a grocery store right and like let's say it was just let's say it was just Carson here and she's six. I know that even without being on FaceTime, I could leave her say, Hey, don't open the door, make sure they're all locked. Uh, stay on your tablet. Don't get off your tablet. I'm going to run to the store real quick. I know I could do that. I'm never going to though. Now, maybe in a couple years, yeah, we might, we might be getting there, but I know for a fact, thousand percent even if something went wrong she could handle most things but i still i still won't do it because it's still what if that one bad thing happens right that's like, what i always think about i always think about like what if i did and then i don't make it back for some reason and my biggest fear especially having dcf on me twice before mm -hmm. is they always said to me it is your job as a parent to always make sure that those kids are safe and protected. And if you don't take care of your job, somebody else is going to take care of it for you. Yeah. And that's that. So I always think about safety, safety, things like this always come into my mind because yeah. you don't always have control. You could cross the street and get hit by a car. Heck, you could have a car crash into your house. You know how many times I see that on TikTok right. videos? Or something crazy <laughs> like that. Yeah. Or, or, you know, like I always think about fires. Like what if the house caught on fire while I was gone? Sure. Well, and like, like Jana said, whenever she left her youngest, uh, who was 10 at home. Okay. You're, you're leaving for a little bit. 10, as long as they're mature, 10 is about right. that age where they, they aren't going to, uh, burn themselves or swallow something they aren't supposed to. That's a ship with unfamiliar things. What could have been in some random drawer that they opened up if they had little toys in place or something like 
all it takes is swallowing one of those kids choking and you aren't going to make it in time. But also times have definitely changed because when I was younger, I would be babysitting like four, five, six kids mm. at like the age of seven and eight years old, being left yeah. with people's kids like for the weekend. I would get left home alone or it would be me and my brother or whatever. It's it is a little different if you have someone that's a little bit older, depending on their responsibility levels. Like if right. it's a very, very responsible eight year old and they're going to be watching the two like three, four or five year olds. OK, all right, cool. You know, I, I, I can kind of see that you're going to be gone for 30 minutes, an hour. That's not that long. The, you know, it's it's not too bad. It's it's all about the age and and maturity levels like how much can they actually handle you have to, you have to be able to test that kid in a crisis leave them act like you're about to leave them home alone and freaking start a fire or something <laughs> you know it doesn't have start to start a it. fire it doesn't no i get it you want to make sure that they can because a lot of people don't think about these things like what if a neighbor i'm right. a, i have attached neighbors what if my neighbor was cooking something like my kids ain't paying attention to the smell of the smoke come in and the whole house goes up like mm -hmm. even at 10 11 12 years old you do something like that or something bad like that happens in the house i guarantee you some of those kids are going to freeze up and they're going to be stuck and they're just going to be in the house while it burns because not everybody can handle that stuff you got to be able to understand what's going on but we'll see what else we can get into someone early on asked about my stepson talon you want you mind if we talk about him real quick no no that's fine it was amanda she was asking uh, that's what that is what it was so amanda he ended up hitting a point where he uh he decided he was gonna move out and move to his dad's you might have i might have talked about that already but briefly he, you did last week briefly yeah he did not like the fact that he has chores at our house he ha was expected to go to school uh, he couldn't handle those couple of things, so he decided he was leaving. And he's been at his dad's for the last, like, two and a half, three weeks, somewhere around there. He has not came here. And he's begged a few times. Like, he's literally asked, oh, my dad won't let me have my friend over. Can I stay the night, stay the weekend at your guys' house or whatever? And we told him, no, you aren't going to use us just because you aren't getting your way at your dad's. Right. So, so he finally has just decided that he is going to come back uh and it's really not that bad because so my wife's ex lives with his mom he has ever since they broke up pretty much for the last you know eight nine years um and so whenever he's there there's less accountability because his dad doesn't make him do things but his grandma will make him do some things and, and she doesn't let it she doesn't let it get too crazy and he can only handle so much of her so now what it is he just switches back and forth between, right he knows how to play both sides of the fence yeah whenever he gets tired of one and tired of the rules in one space he just goes to the other and he was actually supposed to be back this weekend uh but he got covid so we told him stay at his dad's a little bit longer because we don't want covid because right Shan, Shan just had covid and jennifer uh he did end up going to school he went to school all but i think one maybe two days so he was doing kind of what he was supposed to and i think that was that was him trying to prove a point because whenever he's here he doesn't go and he just tries to say it's our fault and stuff it, it just it's a bunch of stupidity he'll do what he's supposed to to prove a point so you know what you can keep thinking whatever you're thinking as long as you're going to school i don't care right. but yeah so that's what's going on with him he realized so, quickly that the grass wasn't as green as he thought it was yeah yeah it's it's really that's a good nice. life lesson though it's just because it's literally he does not want to do chores. He does not want to do basic things that you have to do as a human being and basic responsibilities. And it just. And I think as a parent, it's important that we hold our kids accountable to certain mm -hmm. standards, because if you don't, that's what's going to cause the kid to slip through the cracks and just become a complete misfit. Yeah. And. Uh, 
I, I mean, he hangs out with friends every once in a while and stuff, but it, it, even his friends, I don't think his friends have been hanging out with him that much because even them, they aren't rocket scientists. They aren't going you know, crazy far at the moment, but they're at least working and trying to get things done and they see that he doesn't like do anything. So they aren't even hanging out with him much, but yeah, uh, we were going to talk about the moon landing supposedly we're going to go back into space i read like all types of stuff on that we are planning to go back into space in the near future and i wanted to talk to marie about yes. whether you believe the moon landing happened i don't know i, I don't know i, I believe maybe not now because i was programmed to believe everything that was ever told to me but True. now that i know better i would say maybe not the biggest things to consider one back then uh the government wasn't quite so dishonest now don't take that the wrong way and like think that i'm saying that they were super honest and they told everybody everything they did not do that but they were not quite as dishonest as they are now so that's one kind of thing to take into account the other thing is we needed to win the space race. We had to. America had to to plant its flag and be the best. If Russia would have won that and shown that they were farther ahead, it just would have been a whole thing. So I could see that maybe, maybe they were in space or were getting to space. Maybe it was almost there and something went wrong. And then they were like, we can't have this failure. Let's figure out a way to fake it so that we can win. I could see that and understand it even. But all the evidence, everyone tries to pick apart like uh, the flag is moving this way or there's wind or some nonsense. There's all types of little things that people try and pick apart. People do that with everything, though. I yeah. believe it probably happened, but I, I do. Too. There's conspiracy theorists all over, especially on social media. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. I don't know, man. It's stuff like that. That's that's a big one. Like if that really is fake. My thing is, though, too, the fact that and this is one of the biggest arguments, the fact that nobody has said it's fake. No one involved has said it's fake. No right. family members of people involved said it's fake. Somebody would have came out by now and said, oh, this wasn't a realistic thing. Now, during the time, no, we did not have that that super advanced technology that we have now that could really, really uh, make things easy for people to do it back then. But we were in desperate times like desperate desperate times we had to win this thing in desperate times people do some crazy crazy shit so i think they found a way and they couldn't replicate it we're already hemorrhaging money like freaking crazy so why would you spend that money to do it again whenever it, it's not really benefiting things i think the reason they're doing it now is to kind of save save face and give people another thing to pay attention to because there's so much bad going on right now, I think they are trying to push something that's like a common goal. I feel like loose, like loose lips sink ships, and I feel like somebody would have said something by now, like you said. Thousand percent. So somebody, and it wouldn't have been, it probably wouldn't have been one of the people directly involved. It would have been a family member. Right. It, not everybody would have took that to the grave. And even technology. Look at how far technology's come, even in like the. My son's 13 years old. When I had my first child, I remember taking the pictures in the hospital. I, we had like the old school flip phones back in that day. Yeah. The pictures were, were with those digital throwaway cameras that are super grainy. Like I look at all the pictures, yeah. how, how things have become so sharp. Mm -hmm. And like, I think it would have been hard to fake it would have been every aspect of it because you got to remember too if they had faked it we still have those videos of the moon landing if they had faked it they would have been trying to fake it for that moment you know what i mean for the people at that time back then 
there wasn't as much understanding of like how gravity works and you know all the random stuff that would go into faking that so it would have worked for probably a decade or two but then something something would have been easily debunked like something would have made right. sense that it was like no this is absolutely fake because they the, the technology just wasn't there but with today Today, things aren't believable with certain things because no. like even Ricky said, the AI technology today, you can make a TikTok video and have it generate the whole video AI generated. Like, mm -hmm. and a lot of these companies are using AI for their advertising too. It blows my mind how uh, simple minded people are because the fact that that is something that like people are are using AI on when there's so much capability that it has, you're spending all this on advertising instead of like figuring out how to make your product better or something like that. Cause right. nobody's doing stuff like that. I haven't seen a single company. I have not heard of a single company using AI to actually benefit the product unless it is directly like artificial intelligence related. So it's, it's a way, it's a waste of technology almost right now, but they are doing some crazy shit. In today's society, like a lot of these commercials and stuff, they're just, they're not even real people. No, it's all fake. Cause now right. they don't have to pay the people. They have to, they have to get the rights paid. Software, them. right. Yeah. If they get, so, so let's say, um, let's say they want somebody wanted you for a commercial. So let's say it was Verizon. Verizon wanted you for a commercial. So they can call you up and say, hey, we don't actually need you to be in this commercial. We just need the rights to use your AI image in this commercial. Instead of you getting paid 100,000 to do the commercial, we're gonna give you 5,000 bucks so that we can get those rights. And people will take it because they don't have to do anything. I want to see Oprah's AI special that Ricky's talking about. So he's saying, Ricky, is that on Hulu? Because I'm going to try to check that out it when I get off of here. Yeah. Have you checked it out? A little bit. I haven't got to watch the full thing yet. Uh, yeah, it's super interesting. I don't, I don't have enough info because I haven't watched the whole thing. We might talk about that next week if it's. I'm just going to definitely watch. Start watching that today, though. You know, even the way your phone listens to you in the background, like when you're talking, bro, I even like, you know, like you could be having like a heated argument or, or going back and forth with someone. These phones are listening to what we're saying at all times. I mean, that's like Google. Google is one of the biggest users of that. And they'll listen to what you say and whatever you talk about, they'll feed you that, you know, that stuff. They're catering it to you. Just like all these, uh, like TikTok and, and YouTube, all of them have an algorithm. It is literally your real life algorithm. What are you doing in real life so that they can better advertise? They can better help you with searches. It's not all meant to, make money and like mislead people but i mean they use it literally for everything if they think you are going to search something because you've been worried about i don't know my little pony if you've been talking a lot about my little pony you go to search who created they're gonna put in my little pony you know just to make it better software so they can continue to be on top and that's that's the type of stuff that makes sense for AI. And if they used it well, that could be crazy. You know what's crazy to me? Half the time, and I say this, and I'm always saying it, like even yesterday, I was in the car with the kids, and my Siri just starts talking like randomly out of nowhere. I'm, my, my daughter's like, we ain't even talking to you. Like, you don't even answer her when she does talk to you. Now you're talking to her? Because Siri doesn't even listen to me when I'm like, hey, Siri, blah, blah, blah. But when I don't want it to listen, she just butts her shit, butts right in there. My daughter's like, wow, that's slick. I'm like, yep. That sneaky bitch. <laughs> right, right. She's always listening. Now oh, Siri's yeah. listening to me. Look. Oh, she said, I don't better. understand. Oh, God. Can, Hitman, can you get into like any device, like a TV or uh, iPad or something? Or does it have to be a phone? just because they're all connected very similarly. So I wasn't sure if there's something that was gonna stop you if it was another device. Hitman said he can get into a phone in about 10 seconds. 
And that's scary. Yeah, anything with Wi-Fi, I figured. So the new iPhone, the fi- I have the iPhone 14 and I have a 15. Right. When you put them up to each other, they can t- content, like they could share each other's stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like that. Because if you, I put my phone up to my son's, I can get what's on his phone. I don't like that. It's just like the airdrops and everything. I don't like can, it though. I don't like that feature. That's why Hitman's saying you can get into people's stuff so quick because they're meant to connect to each other. You just know how to open up that feature. Right. And airdrops is the easiest way to get into an iPhone. Exactly. It's it's crazy. They There are so many things like this too and there are so many measures in place for security on all of this stuff. But at the same time, there's there's always going to be that balance so it's never going to be like a crazy crazy hard thing to do breaking into someone's phone or whatever because you have the security in place to make sure that not anybody can you know get in but if you're going to have these features like airdrop and uh all the apps that like you can connect and chirp or whatever you know what i'm talking about um if that stuff's in place you're always going to have back doors basically into your devices that's scary i don't know i it i don't know i don't like it it's a truth um, though i i don't want somebody in my stuff it's not my personal business really that i'm worried about it's like my bank account information and right. stuff like i don't want you getting into that shit. i, I don't care about anything else because none of it el- none of it really matters but you start taking my money or, you know, my information and shit like that. That's what's that's gonna- the issue that I just had. So I have a Capital One card that's linked to my TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. I just have it linked on there just in case I want to, like, buy gifts or coins or whatever. It's just the card that I linked. You know, that card, like, has, like, almost $2,000 worth of charges that I didn't authorize from TikTok shop. Don't know mm-hmm. how, how someone got my card information. But I just went through this yesterday with Capital One. I'm going back like the past couple of months because I never use that card for anything, but it was hacked somehow. Do you have PayPal and I'm trying or to... anything hooked up to this? Probably do without even knowing it, to be honest with you. That is something I have PayPal hooked up to this and I, I try not to actually have my card on here just for reasons like that it's just an extra measure that somebody would have to go through to get to my i gotta take my card off because now that i'm gonna i'm gonna do a dispute because i it all it keeps saying is internet services on tiktok what the freak internet services am i buying i'm not buying nothing it says tiktok internet services right that's weird does it does it do that when you buy something from shop no, these weren't shop purchases. It says for TikTok internet. I don't know what the hell that is because I've never bought anything. Even my TikTok <laughs> shop, I don't use that card. I use other forms of payment. It's weird. Plus, what what can you actually buy off TikTok besides coins for gifts and and shop items? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what these internet charges are that are on my card. It's it's re- there's like some days it's like ninety one dollars. They're like $91, $16, and it goes back to $90. It's weird. Yeah, see, I don't, TikTok has had so many problems and they're so, they're so garbage anyways. Do you believe in like an Apple wallet, like keeping your cards in like a wallet on your phone, like an Apple wallet? I have never once used an Apple wallet. Right, I gotta be careful because one time I had a card linked on there that I had an issue with too, because I wasn't, you don't realize sometimes you tap like the Apple pay button or whatever. Like I do that accidentally sometimes. Well, and that's why I have most things connected to like PayPal or something like that. And then have uh, two step authentic authentication um, just to kind of extra guard that. And I'll, I'll have things kind of moved around, but it's all leading to one place so I can just pay for whatever I need to. Otherwise, like if it's a secure site or seems like a really secure site, I may use it, but like, I don't really buy things online like that. I'm not, I'm not doing purchases every day. Right. I don't really, per- I, when I purchase, I don't use that card though. When I purchase, I purchase with my debit card. I don't, I got to figure out where to unlink this card though, because I don't know what's going on. But a lot of people say like, 
where you live, you you can go up to a, a get gas, right? And put your card right in at the pump. People yeah. say never do that. People say never do that because people put those little scan things on. Yeah, you just got to know what to look for. What do you look for, though? The, it won't be the same. So there are ones like it's it's almost like a cover that goes onto it and as you slide your card in it, it reads the numbers off of it that way do you think um, that a mom that's like eh, with her kids is going to be looking at that like because i know i wouldn't look at that it all it would only take a couple of seconds if you don't know about it then yeah but i don't know there there are a million i always go in i always walk are. in and pay for the gas I mean, they could do it on that too. You could have a employee there that has one of those on a on a card machine. Wow! It it doesn't matter. That's just a nice, convenient place for like a random person to put those. It's right. not that anyone can do it anywhere. So you either got to be careful all the time with literally everything, or just not worry about it and hope for the best. Wow. Yeah, they can, they can read it right out of the air with an RFID scanner. Yeah. You got anything else? No, that's pretty much sums it up for today, right? Yeah, we, we went through pretty much everything. So cool. Well, thank you everyone who was in here the whole time. You guys were awesome. Nice, chill, chill episode.